So my name is Lisa Lu, the IP business advisor from China IP SME Hub Desk. This, this is the project where we provide first line and confidential and free intellectual property assistance to the S, uh, small and medium sized enterprise from European Union and other countries from the single market program. Um, before starting today's webinar, I would like to introduce everyone to have a quiz with me. Um, the quiz, there, there are only three very short questions from the quiz. Um, um, be, before the webinar, this quiz can help me to assess the intellectual property awareness from the participants today. Um, we will run the same quiz after the webinar so that everyone can see how much improvement you made after the webinar. So the first, first question is about IP protection in China, which is correct. If you have not entered the quiz, please scan this QR code. Again, this is anonymous quiz and no personal information will be collected. About this question, there are three options. Um, you have to choose which is the correct one. First one, the first option is to enter the China market. You need to file a trademark in Chinese. That means all the documents should be in Chinese and the trademark itself also should be in Chinese. Um, the second option is trade secrets is regulated by trade secret law in China. The third one, China customs inspects goods entering and leaving China. So which is correct? Correct. I'm not going to tell you the answer now because we will have the same quiz after the training. And you will see what is the correct answer. Let's wait for a few seconds for more people to join us. Okay, next question. Concerning pattern protection, which statement is true? Again, you have to select the correct answer. Software cannot be patented in China. Only some types of the patents can be registered in China via national and international routes. Or for the same innovation, utility model can be filed with, with the invention pattern on the same day in China. Which one is true? Good, I can see more people participating us. Um, again, if you did not join our quiz, please scan the QR code. Okay, let's move to the last question which is allowed under the Chinese law, reverse engineering, or um, it requires the Chinese intellectual property right to be governed by non-Chinese law, or the Chinese law prohibits a licensee from making improvements to the licensed technology. We will wait for a few seconds. Uh, I can see all of the participants choose the last option and we will see if this is the right answer or not. So today um, it's my pressure to introduce intellectual property landscape in China. And we will introduce firstly the overview of the IP legislation in China over these 40 years. And following that, we will see what is the, what's the IP protection system in China. And afterwards, we will also discuss IP management in China. And lastly, um, I, will be, I will introduce the remedies for intellectual property infringement in China. So what is the enforcement of actions available in China? I will leave the takeaway messages. After that, we will go to the Q&A session. 
So if anyone has any question, please, question, please leave to please save it to our Q and A session. If one see the history of IP legislation in China, one you will see that before 1978, there is no intellectual property laws at all, and the first draft of the Chinese IP law, which is the trademark law, only started in 1979. However, within these 40 years, China has been, the, the legislation of IP in China has been drastic, uh, drastically developed. So if you see um, in 2017, to be more in line with the international norms, a lot of intellectual property laws has been updated. And also, China has been a signatory to all major IP treaties, including PCT and Hague System, also Madrid System and Berm Convention. Most of the uh, China has been the, the signature for most of the treaties for over 30 years, except for Hague System. China only joined the Hague System um, in 2022. That means international industrial design has only been available in China for less than two years. Um, based on the World Intellectual Property Organization's data, the CNIPA, which is the China National Intellectual Property Administration, um, who handled the patent and trademark issue in China, um, the CNIPA received the most PCT since 2019. And ever since that, China maintained the top origin of PCT that can illustrate that the technology development in China has been, has been in a very high position for many years. And one of the reasons is that the government has put IP as a top national priority, and the government has a plan that make China as global IP power by 2035. It's a long-term plan. So this is the overview of the IP legislation. Um, what does it mean to, what, what is the IP landscape in China, which is the most um, interesting questions and I got questioned by the SMEs all the time. So in China, um, there are different IP can be protected, can be protected, which is consistent with international norms. So first is trademark, trademarks including the, you can re register your logo and brand name in China as trademark. And for your in innovation and industrial design, you can register as patent. I will explain more later on that industrial design is protected as trademark, uh, as patent in China. This is different from Europe. And copyright can also be protected in China. So what can be registered as, what can be protected as copyright? including logo, packaging, brochure, and software. And also um, geographical indications can be protected in China as well. A last IP guide is, uh, IP type is trade secrets. Different from other IP, trade secrets cannot be registered in China. And there are some basic IP principles apply in China. First IP is territory, ter ter territory, uh, rights in China. That means if you have intellectual property protection in Europe or in Poland, that doesn't mean you have protection in China. You have to check, for example, like if you have international IP, is it extended to China? And um, if you do not have international IP, then you have to check if you already register in China. Otherwise, there is no protection in China. The second principle is registration that applies to trademark and patent. That means without registration, you do not have full protection for your trademark and patent. And the third principle is first to file, which is different from uh, first to use principle in Europe. First to file principle, that means whoever um, is the first to apply and register IP in China, they can claim they are the owner of IP. Um, it's if um, that person register, uh, copy and register a European brand and register it as trademark before that European company did, the European company still can, can um, overcome these trademarks and claim their right back, but it will be very expensive and it will take a lot of time. So we always suggest for your 
especially for your trademarks and patent register in China as soon as possible. And the last principle only applies to patent. Um, so for absolute novelty, that means to be patentable in China, technology or industrial design must, has, must have absolute novelty. That means it cannot be published anywhere in the world before the date of application. However, there are certain exemptions. For example, if a European company disclosed the new technology for the first time during an international trade fair recognized by the Chinese government, um, the companies can still file a patent application within six months without losing the novelty. For the companies to better audit their intellectual property, we, we recommend you to go to our website and use IP diagnostic tool to see what type of or what type of IPs you can protect and how to protect it. And of course, you can always arrange a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. Based on your business strat strategy, we can come up with an idea. So let's go to different types of IP. First, um, first, and um, usually it's the most important IP to enter the trademark, tr the China market is trademarks. So for your brand name, for logo and for trade name, one can always consider registering as trademark. And in China, there are two registration systems. One is the, inter one is the, the national registration system. That means the registration can only be applicable in China and the protection can only be um, can only extend it in China, not any other jurisdiction. Um, for the national registration, um, a Polish companies can choose to file with the CNIPA, as we already mentioned, an authority who handle the trademark and patent issue. Um, before filing the regist registration system um, for a Polish company, you can always check if you already attend any trade fair that is recognized by the Chinese government. If yes, within six months, you can file the trademarks registration with an earlier application date, which is the date you attend the trade fair. And with, with the claim of trade fair priority rights, um, the companies can extend protection of trademarks to an earlier date. Um, for the national registration, the official fee is very low, is only 40 euros. However, for a Polish company, it's necessary to hire a trademark attorney in China. So um, in total, for a straightforward registration with CNIPA, it will be around 400 euros. Um, a straightforward registration will take as short as seven months. Usually it's 10 or 12 months to get the registration. And the second registration system is international trademarks. That means one can file a uh, trademarks uh, with World Intellectual Property Organization that will allow um, you to protect your trademarks in different jurisdiction, depending on how many countries, how many contracting parties you designated in your original applications. For example, you can select China, you can select EU and US, Japan, different countries. And the official fees for international registration is quite high. If, for example, if a Polish company file um, Polish trademarks and then extend to China, it will be more than 700 euros. That is more expensive than the national registration. And it's not including the alternative fee. And um, for international registration, it will take around one and a half years to get the registration. And similar with most of the countries around the world, there are 45 classes in China. That means to classify different goods and services. There are 45 classes from one to uh, class one to class um, 30, 34. There are goods trademarks from class 35 to class 45. There are services trademarks. But different from a lot of countries in China, there is a principle, subclass principle. That means within one class, 
it will cat categorize into different subclass. And if your um, if the goods of your trademarks in are uh, in different subclass um, with another trademarks, it will not be similar trademarks. For example, like in class nine, there is computer program and there is sensor as well. For those two goods, they are in different subclass. So if you have a trademarks only in computer program and the other company has trademarks in sensor, even though they are they are both in class nine, but they are in different class subclass, that means they are not similar marks. And to select the right subclass, you have to consult the trademark attorney in China. Uh, they will help you selecting the um, correct subclass based on your goods. For the Polish company coming to China market, one issue is really important and usually be overlooked, that is registering Chinese trademarks. This is not necessary options for coming to the China market. Um, however, we highly recommend it. Why? Because Chinese trademarks will be easier for the Chinese customers to remember. If you have the English trade name or uh, the, the brand name or Polish one, for Chinese customers, it's really difficult to remember it. And at the end, the Chinese market will come out with a Chinese name for your brand. So to control your trademarks in Chinese, it's always better to design a Chinese trademark beforehand. And to select one good Chinese trademark, you can choose the um, Chinese characters with similar pronunci pronunciation to your Latin word, uh, Latin trademarks, or can reflect the meaning of your original trademarks. And one and another very important issue for trademarks is trademark search that can help you to identify if there are any similar trademarks already in the China market. If yes, maybe you want to redesign your trademarks. Otherwise, the money you invest in the trademark registration will be a waste because your trademarks may not be registerable in China. And also um, in China, there are some rules. That means some of the trademarks may not be registrable in China, even though there is no similar trademarks in China now. For example, if your trademarks containing national or state name, then the CNIPA will refuse your registration and ask you to provide a lot of evidence. Um, based on my experience, the evidence is such a large amount and the C and CNIPA usually will not approve at the end. You have to go to the court and go through the litigation to get your trademarks registered. So in conclusion, trademark, trademark search is really important. And another very important IP is pattern. In China, there are three types of pattern, including invention pattern, utility models, and design patterns. As I already mentioned, design means industrial design, also get protected under the pattern system, which is very different from Europe system. So let's see what's the different um, among those three patterns. For invention pattern, it protects the new technical solution or improvements to a product or process. It protects the function of the, of the, of the um, new technology and it lasts for 20 years after the grant of right. It lasts the longest among all of these pattern types. Um, it will go through a substantive, substantive um, examination. That means it will take longer time for you to get the invention pattern rights. It usually takes at least three years, which is longer than the other two. And the amount of the official fee is around 440 euros for national pattern registration. And I will let you know um, the international one later on. And for utility models, they also protect the function of the product, but they only protect the functional shape or structure. And um, utility model only takes six months to get it granted because it does not go through the substantive um, examination. And the protection term is 10 years and it's cheaper to get it, it's only 64 euros for a straightforward registration. For design pattern, different from the other two, design pattern protect the 
non-function part of the aspect, which um, which is the aesthetic aspect from the product. And it lasts for 15 years. And again, because there's no substantive examination, it only takes half a year to get the rights. And the official fee is as cheap as utility model, which is 64 euros. For you to better understand what's the difference among these three patents, we can see, um, we can take one technology as an example. For the AR glass, um, if for, to protect the function of displaying virtual information in a view of a real environment, you can use the invention pattern to protect it. And if the if the glass has the has the structure to make it easier to wear and take off, then you can consider using utility models to protect it. And for the aesthetic details of the AR 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 glass, consider the design pattern. And similar with tree mounts, there are also two routes to protect pattern. And uh, good news is international routes uh, applies to all types of pattern. So for national uh, registration, that means directly filing with the CNIPA and the protection only takes place in China. Um, also, uh, as I already mentioned, a absolute novelty should apply to patent, but there is an exception of trade fair. So if a Polish company attend a trade fair recognized by Chinese government within six months, it's still possible to file a patent protection in China without losing the novelty. And if a Polish company has filed a, a, a patent in Europe, within 12 months, you can still claim the priority in China. And that means you can still file the patent application without losing the novelty, and the application date will be the date you file in Europe. Um, 12 months for invention pattern and utility model, and for design pattern, the priority period is shorter, it's only six months. And for international registration, it's always possible for the pattern. You can choose PCT to file invention pattern and utility model. And for your industrial design, choose the Hague system, which is only available, uh, which has been only available in China two years ago. And there is a strategy of filing pattern in China um, that is parallel filing of a, a utility model and an invention pattern. Why do we choose this way? Because it has different advantage. I will explain later. And how to file this, how to conduct this parallel filing. So you for your technology, one technology, you file two applications. One is for utility model, the other is for invention pattern on the same day with a declaration of parallel filing. And this parallel filing is only available in national application. That means international. Um, PCT, it's not available for parallel filing. Afterwards, in, within six months, it's possible that you will get the utility model rented in China. And you have to wait for a long time for your invention pattern granted because it takes three months, uh, three years. And after three years, finally, you get the invention pattern granted. You can choose to abandon utility model because invention pattern can last for longer compared with. 10 years protection of utility model, invention pattern can give you 20 years protection. So by using parallel filing, um, you, one can get, uh, you can compensate the lack of protection while protection, while the invention pattern is still pending because it's really quick and fast to get the utility model granted. And also it can extend the protection term from 10 years of utility model to 20 years of invention pattern. And um, the third type of IP is copyright. So copyright in China, again, uh, similar with most of the countries around the world, um, can cover the software, lo logo, packaging, like the food packaging, and the banner and the brochure. Um, because China is a signatory to Berne Convention, so the copyright is automatically protected in China once uh, this is it was created. Um, 
it lasts for 20 years for the protection. However, we still recommend you to register your software and other rights as copyrights. First, because the registration certificate will be required in the enforcement. And also the registration procedure is really fast and cheap. Only as, as far as the speed, the registration examination period, it's only one or two months. Um, for software, it is free of charge. And for the other type of copyright, it will take around 40 euros. So you can see it's a fast and cheap registration procedure compared with other rights. Um, for software protection, I always receive the question to, um, from the SMEs about to protect my software, should I choose copyright in China or is there any options? Uh, yes, there indeed are any other options to protect soft software, but let's start with the most common way of software protection, which is the copyright. So if you register your co software um, copyright in China, the copyright registration certificates will, will be the criminal prima for sealed evidence. That means and about software copyrights, if you get the certificates, the information in the certificates will be regarded as true and authentic evidence, unless there is contrary evidence. However, keep in mind that the protection from the co software copyright is quite limited. It protects the source code of the software, but it does not protect the core idea behind the source code. That means if someone makes some modification to your source code, or use different code libraries, then it will not be regarded as copyright infringement. And what is the stronger uh, protection for software? It is the software pattern. And to use pattern to protect software, this um, option is only available in China since 2017. So if your software has technical features, which is quite rare, um, you can consider using invention pattern to evaluate if your software can be patented. You have to talk with a patent attorney in, Ch in China, and they will also help you to draft a patent claims um, to help you to get the software patented as, as, um, as possible as they can. Because again, software patent only available a few years ago and the success successful examination is still quite limited. And if the software is embedded with um, hardware, for the hardware, of course, you can consider use invention pattern to protect it. And for um, a lot of software, it has the special and unique graphic user interface. It's also possible to protect it in China by design patterns. And in 2022, it's possible to file the partial um, industrial design channel. So, for example, if a Polish company designs an app which can run in different devices like a smartphone and computer, and also smartwatch, and the company can submit just one pattern application for your GUI. Because in the past, before the new law, um, the company has to file different application to, to reflect different devices. But now in one application, you can protect your GUI, which applies in different devices. Um, also another important IP is geographical indications, which protect the place of um, origins, orig origins of the products. And there are two methods of protection in China. One is protect, register your uh, register the GI as collective or certification marks. The other is to register the product quality and characteristics marking. And both methods has to be done by your GI organizations. For company themselves, it's not possible to protect the GI to apply the GI on their name. Um, and since 2022, the EU China agreement on GI has been um, has been enforced in China. And as of today, there are already there are already 
350 GIs from Europe and China automatically protected in EU and in EU and China as product marking under this agreement. For example, um, for Polish water car, it's already been protected as GI, GI in China, and for Polish water car, it's um, owned by the Polish Water Car Association. If if that's the correct name of this association. So you can see it's not a company to apply or register the GI. It's always the GI organization. And the last type of IP, as I mentioned, is the one which cannot be registered in China, which is the trade secrets. And how to how to identify trade secrets and how to make some make the business information as trade secrets. There are three elements. First, this information has to um, needs to be non-public. That means nobody, no, nobody's, uh, no, it is not known to the public. And second element is it has the actual potential commercial values. And the third one is confidentiality measures has to be taken to protect this information. And um, there is no trade secret law in China so far. And if there is any trade secret infringement, the regulating law will be anti unfair competition law. So it's a bit tricky because for to regulating trade secret, it's not trade secret law. It's not like the other laws, but this is anti unfair competition law. And we list five steps for uh, companies reference how to protect trade secrets. First to, is to identify and catalog trade secrets. And second, use different measures to protect it, like uh, um, confi confidentiality room as a physical barrier or technical room like, uh, like different, different um, passwords and different IT measures, and also contractual, contractual measures, such as the agreements, the confidentiality agreements and document trade secret protection measures in case if there's any dispute, you have to prove you already take measures to protect those information as trade secrets. Um, also implement a trade secret protection policy within your company because the leakage of trade secret from employees are the most common way to, um, to uh, for the trade secret leakages. So make sure your employees understand your expectation. And it's also important to include the trade secret measures in the employee, employee agreement. And lastly is to consider non-disclosure agreement when you negotiate with any third party. So let's see what, uh, let's have some case study to better understand how to protect your IP in China. And we we have these Spanish SMEs um, who attend to attend attend to attend a trade fair in Beijing, and this SME is a producer of agriculture and farming equipment, including tractor. So, what innovation do they have? What innovation do they plan to bring to the trade fair in China? They have a new model of a tractor, um, with a new design and new function that allows to uh, that allows lower fuel consumptions and the core technology is the engine but the engine has no invention pattern in China so far so they are in this situation that should they bring the new technology to the trade fair and attract a lot of new business opportunities in China but as a price they will lose the novelty of engine because as I mentioned if if one technology is known to public and it will not be able to apply for patent application in China, even though there is an exemption, trade fair exemption, but the exemption period is only six months, which is not enough for them to prepare a very well written patent claims in Chinese. So um, they have, they come out with a solution to protect the engine as trade secrets. As here, you can see different measures they take to protect the engine. First, they decide to come to the trade fair, but without the engine. So they can protect it as 
uh, uh, to protect the novelty of the technology. They even conduct the internal legal training for the staff when promoting the tractor and discussing the advantages of this new technology without leaking the details of the technology. Therefore, they can make sure the detail of technology is not known to any public. And thirdly, they notarize the expulsion of the tractor. That's, that's the evidence that they already take measures to protect it. Mm. Protect it from being known to the public. And besides the and protecting the engine as trade secrets, what else did they take? So after conducting an IP audit, they register trademarks, they register their logo and train name as trademark, and they protect their product catalog as copyrights. And also for the new design of the tractor, they use the design patent to protect it. And all these measures, all these IP protection measures. Um, have been done before they coming to China. So as a good result, they were able to showcase the tractor without losing the novelty of the engine. And later on, they apply for invention pattern for the engine and with longer time to pre prepare for the um, patent application claims, they eventually successful get the patent rights granted in China. And from this case, we can learn that it is not recommended to participate in a trade fair without prior protection of IP rights. Using IP registration and trade secrets to protect your technology, and the less, uh, the mere exposition, uh, exposition of the advantage that a new technology will have does not mean the lose of novelty um, in pattern, as long as the technical solution details are not revealed. Participants in a Trade fairs must be planned in other months to have all IP assets ready and protected before coming to the China market, including the trade fair. And the second case study is, um, is a scenario that if someone else registered my trademarks in China, what can I do? This is a question I receive um, from a lot of European companies, including a lot of Polish companies. So this is a real case from a Polish SME in the cosmetics industry. So this SME is planned to internationalize to market. And before that, they contact us for trademark registration. Um, when, we are, when we were assisting these companies, we realized that this Polish company's trademark has already been registered in China by a Chinese company, which has no relationship with this Polish company. So the Polish companies wonder what they can do um, to get their trademarks registered in China and to clear this, to clear this Chinese the, the, the trademark registered by the Chinese company, which is the could be the bad faith registration. So um, based on these trademarks, because this trademark has been registered less than three years and it has been registered, so the only feasible um, options to taking administrative action is the invalidation and invalidations usually takes um, usually takes around 1000 or even more euros to have a trademarks attorney in China to raise and it takes 12 months for the companies to get a decision and because for this company they do not use in China for this Polish company they have not used their trademarks in China at all so the vital um, evidence collections will be the bad faith evidence collection. That means if there's any evidence to to um, indicate that these companies has been registered a lot of trademarks in China and copying a lot of brands from Europe, um, this could be helpful to win the invalidation case. Um, for any other SMEs, if you already used in China, your use evidence in China can also enhance the successful rates in China. And if this trademark has been registered for three more than three years, it's not this case, but if there's any other bad faith registration, um, you can consider to raise the non-use cancellation. It's cheaper and takes less time compared with the invalidation. However, whether or not this trademark has been used is not certain. So um, one cannot be very 
there is no like, certainty that you can win this case. Um, the company can also consider the trademark purchase, but the purchase price is always overpriced. Um, it's necessary to do the background search of the trademark owner to make sure the trademark um, transfer is available. If the owner um, has been decided uh, has been decided by the CNIPA that the owner has bad faith, it's possible that the trademark purchase will not be available to proceed. And if if the company does not want to take any of these options, it's also possible to rebrand the trademarks just for China market, or uh, just come out with a Chinese name and use the Chinese name in the China market. Um, also, the last option, which is not applied in this case, is opposition. They only apply to the unregistered trademarks within this opposition period. Um, only if the Polish company has trademark, prior trademarks in China, you can win the opposition case. So from this case, we can learn that bad faith registration could delay the market entry, lead to the market confusion and counterfeits in Europe. Trademark scoring is still commonplace in China, and to combat the bad faith registration, you can consider different options. And a good IP lawyers, it's always necessary. Before the trademark assignment, the company should run a background search to see if the seller has bad faith. And first to file principle applies in China, so register trademark in China as soon as possible. And if um, the Polish company already finished the registration part, then it's important to manage the IP in China. And one of one of the very important function and authority in China is China Customs. And China Customs exempt the imported and exported goods. And the China Customs, they can detain the infringing goods. They can do the investigation, they can impose fines, and they can also arrange criminal proceedings. And with the China Customs, one can register, uh, one can record trademarks, copyright, and patents. However, after register the IP, it's important to add the authorized exporters and manufacturers to the white list. Otherwise, the Customs may um, detain the goods from your exporters and manufacturer, and that will delay your time of the shipment. And um, if the Customs identify the suspected infringing good, they will inform the right owner and based on the right owner's request and also documents, they will decide whether to release those goods or detain those goods. And um, if, um, after the customs inform the right owner, you only the right owner usually only have three working days to reply to the customs, which is really short. So do not miss the deadline. And the China customs can function very well. But one should keep in mind that it also costs quite a lot. So if the um, detaining of the infringing good actually happening, the right owner needs to provide guaranteed um, to cover the cost of the warehouse um, and also the other cost um, incurred to the to the customs. Um, if you want to mon if you want to hire a lawyer to monitor and train the customs, it will also cost extra lawyer's feet. Um, however, it's, it's really important to have a lawyer to monitor and train the customs because the goods come uh, go and out from the China customs are huge. So to make sure the customs knows your brand, knows which is the counterfeit goods, and you have to train the customs several times. And that is about the customs protection. And another way to manage your IP and to leverage your IP is to sign a license agreement with Chinese partner that can bring lo uh, that can bring loyalties to your companies and benefits and um, benefits from your tech from your technologies. And there are some important um, provisions you should consider to put into a license agreement when you sign with a Chinese partner. First is a clear definition of the scope of IP and also clarify the ownership of IP. Make sure you can monitor the licenses activities that can prevent the unauthorized use. And ensure the validity of your agreement. And 
to pre prevent your technology from being transferred to third party without your permissions, make sure you include the assignment or transfer um, in provision. And for reverse engineering, it's actually allowed in China. So I'm sure a lot of you already know what is reverse engineering, but in case you do not, Reverse engineering is the process of analyzing an existing object and breaking down to its core components and measuring its critical dimension to understand its function. Um, the, China, the Chinese law actually allow reverse engineering, but you can always set in the contract to limit it. And if the counterparty actually does the reverse engineering, they should provide the compensation to you as the IP owner. And do not forget the, the confidentiality provisions to protect your confidential info, information and including the dis, dispute resolution and make sure the applicable law for intellectual property rights is always Chinese law. Because if you use uh, like Polish law to regulate IPR, which like Chinese IPR, it will not be enforceable. So it's important to make sure to regulate Chinese IP, you use the Chinese law. And always including the Chinese version of your agreement. And there are also some provision you should try to avoid. For example, um, the Chinese law does not, pro uh, if you, in your agreement, you prohib <laughs> prohibit a licensee from making improvement to the license technology, to your patents. It is not allowed to prohibit such improvement. So it's always possible, it's always allowed for your Chinese partner to make improvement to your patent, to your technology in China. And in your, if you're in your agreement, you prohibit that, then these provisions will not be enforceable. And also, um, if in your agreement, you exclude any remuneration to an employees who contribute to the technology or improvement of technology that will not um, be allowed by Chinese law either. And again, to, to regulate the, any in disputes from disputes regarding your Chinese IPR, it should be governed by the Chinese law. If in your agreement, you put the non-Chinese law to govern the Chinese IPR, it will not be enforceable as well. Um, if you uh, encounter an IP infringement in China, what will happen? And um, this is also interest to a lot of Polish companies a lot. So for the enforcement options, I made a roadmap for you to understand what could happen after the infringement. So if one finds an infringement, a very important step is to collect and preserve the evidence. This step should be done before taking any options like going to the court or sending a lawyer's letter. And in China, if at the end um, you decide to go to the court and the evidence has to be notarized in China, has to be notarized. Um, it could be notarized with the notarial public or for the elect electronic evidence, it could also be notarized by blockchain. But this this step is really important, especially for those uh, for Polish companies. It's essential to have an investigation companies to do uh, investigate and collect the evidence in China, which is difficult but necessary. Um, uh, another step regarding the evidence collection is to obtain the registration certificate in Chinese. Um, for a, not, a lot of enforcement actions, such as the administrative actions or litigation, without the Chinese certificate, the of authority would not admit your IP rights. So if you have intellect, international trademarks and um, applied for a Chinese certificate now, um, so after the evidence collection, there are many options. If the infringement is found in the e-commerce platform, you can consider to use the notice and takedown procedure. That means you notice the e-commerce platform and to ask them to take down the infringing link. Because based on Chinese law, the e-commerce 
platforms has joint liability in case of the IP infringement. So most of the time they will collaborate with you very well. Um, and um, uh, another enforcement action is to send a notification letter to the uh, infringers. Company can do it without a lawyer. It's very mild. And basically you tell the infringer that I realize what you are doing now um, and I'm open to a negotiation. And a more serious letter is the cease and desist letter. Uh, you have to have uh, lawyers to send this letter and follow up for you. Um, um, to conduct investigation, you can also consider to have administrative authority in China. That will be police and administration for market regulation. Um, they can they can carry out a raid or carry out an investigation um, for you if you have evidence to um, showing to to indicating that there is counterfeit in a specific warehouse. Those authorities they can carry out a raid without alerting the infringer. So it's a good way for foreigners, uh, foreign companies to collect the evidence and also take actions. However, if you want to have the administrative authorities to do that for you, it's always recommended to have uh, lawyers in China. They always um, prefer to work with the lawyers. Um, also, um, ADR is available. In if your agreements already um, already include these uh, like meditation um, to solve your dispute, and last resort is litigation, and it, litigation will cost a lot, and also the procedures are very complicated. It's so we always recommend you to take some other actions before going to the litigation. However, for the online com um, copyright infringement, you can always consider internet courts and it takes shorter time and all the procedures will be online. They accept the evidence preserved by blockchain broadly. So it's more, it's more friendly for the foreign companies to go through the internet courts. And we already mentioned about um, a lot of documents you have to be notarized before coming to China, including if you hire a lawyer, you need to sign the um, power of attorney and also provide the business license. And due to the due to China already joined the Apostle Convention, um, uh, you do not need to go to the notarized and legalized with the China Embassy in, your, in Poland anymore. Instead, you can notarize your evidence and or your POA and business license then um, attached with a, a postal certificate that can shorter, shorten the time to prepare for those notarized and legalized documents from months to one or two weeks. And I know a lot of companies are very interesting in e-commerce platform, so be, prepare a case study of the notice and takedown procedure on e-commerce e platforms. Um, there is a Belgian company and this company is in the medical device in the industry. So they already patented their new <laughs> dental industrial uh, instrument as design pattern in China. Um, and after a few months, they realized they are already infringing products on a major Chinese e-commerce platform. So they, they want to take down this infringing link from e-commerce platform. And these SMEs contact the platform to ask whether they can take down this link. Um, the platform said we can, but you, own, you do not have the patent evaluation report. The SMEs only has the patent registration certificate. Therefore, um, it's not only with the patent registration certificate, it's not enough to, for the e-commerce platform to take down this link. And afterwards, the SME apply separately for the patent evaluation report. And it took the SME two and a half months to get the report. Along with the registration certificate, the SME uh, submits all these required documents with the platform, and eventually the platform accept the complaint and removed the infringing link. So from this case, um, it's, we can learn that it's important to protect your IP before entering the China market. Um, it's important to get familiar with the notice and takedown procedure in different e-commerce platforms. 
because different platforms maybe they have different pros the different policies and also monitor the platforms regularly to find to identify the infringing products different from eu industrial design is protected by patent in china so it's important to register your industrial patent design in china as design pattern and after the grant of your design pattern you should also apply for patent evaluation reports which is often required in the enforcement actions for example like removing infringing link from e-commerce platform and lastly is the takeaway messages they are the most important messages from today's webinar first audit your ip assets and update ip protection for trademark and patent, no registration means no protection in China. And counterfeit issue and bad face registration from China are quite common. So th this is one information you should understand about the landscape, IP landscape in China. Level range customs, recorders, and also licensing. And regularly monitor the e-commerce platform, use the notice and takedown system, and also collect and in preserve the evidence before taking any enforcement against the infringement. Also study the law and regulations involving in your industry and consult the IP lawyers and experts in China, um, not only because of their professional also, the, the language could be a difficulty when you try to solve any problem in China and they can help you to address this issue. And for any questions, you can always contact us and you can find China IP SMEs from different channels. As I mentioned before, we will run the quiz again. Okay, I can see already many participants. And so this first question, so about IP protection in China, which is correct. Um, to enter the China market, you need to file a trademark in Chinese. That means documents in Chinese and also the trademark itself is Chinese. Um, trade secret is regulated by the trade secret law in China or China customs inspect goods entering and leaving China, which is correct. Okay, the majority participants choose the right answer. So um, for the option one, to enter the, to the China market, it's not necessary to file a trademark in Chinese. If you file a trademark in Latin language, it's also possible to file in China. And also, if you file an international trademark, it's also possible to get the protection in China. Um, however, we we'll still recommend you to file trademarks in Chinese for, um, for easier to enter the market and also for the reason that customers can remember your trademarks better but it's not a necessary, it's not a must-do thing. Second option is trade secrets regulated by the trade secret law, which is not true because as I said, there is no trade secret law in China. And if there's any infringement happening to your trade secret, you can refer to anti-unfair competition law in China. And last um, statement is correct, which is customs. They checked the exported and imported goods in China. Let's move to the next question. Um, concerning the patent protection, which statement is true? Software cannot be patented in China, or only some types of patent can be registered in China via the national and international rules. Or for the same innovation, utility model can be filed with invention pattern on the same day in China. Which is the true, which is the correct statement? Again, majority choose the correct answer. So why the first one is not right? Software cannot be patented in China this statement is right before 2017. Afterwards, um, the Chinese law allowed the software be patented in China, but only in a very rare situation. And if you have a software and you want to protect it as patent in China, please talk with the patent attorney 
practice in China that can give you more comprehensive advice. And for the second statement, um, for um, in China, all types of uh, patent can be protected via the national and international rules. Especially for the industrial design, it's available to protect it as uh, via the international rules two years ago. Two years ago, so this um, option is wrong. And for the last, for the option C, it's correct, and we already explained that it's a parallel filing. And if you want to protect your patent in China, always consider to file to do the parallel filing. So let's move to the last question, which is rather short, and which is allowed under the Chinese law with reverse engineering or use non Chinese law to re regulate Chinese IPR or prohibit a licensee from making improvement to your technology. I'm very glad to see all the participants choose the right answer. So reverse engineering is allowed under the Chinese law. And for the second option, um, keep in mind that for Chinese IPR, because intellectual property is a territorial right, so you have to use Chinese law to regulate it. And you cannot prohibit your license in China to make any improvement. So thank you everyone for the quiz. I will also invite you to use this uh, to scan this event feedback form to let me know your feedback of this event and also what topics you'll be interested in the future. Any questions, if you do not want to raise here, which I encourage you to do that, you can always contact me later. So let me briefly introduce the China IPS Semi Help Desk project. So it is a project funded by the European uh, Commission, European Union, and uh, its mandate is to assist, support uh, European small and medium-sized enterprises uh, with their intellectual property rights related issues when they internationalize uh, their business uh, to China. So we provide free initial advice to small and medium-sized enterprises uh, from the European Union, as well as from the single market program countries. Uh, in China, we cover the four jurisdictions of China, and Elisa will, will talk about that later, including the mainland, Hong Kong, uh, Macau, and, and Taiwan. So the help desk provides a series of, of services, uh, which you can see on the on the next slide. Um, so our core service is being the inquiry helpline that allows uh, SMEs to ask us to reach us either via the email or phone or through the, our website and ask us a, a question, any question relating related to intellectual property rights protection uh, or intellectual property rights matters in, in China and receive then a reply uh, within, within three working days. Uh, apart from our helpline services, uh, we also provide one-on-one um, -on -one consultation sessions. So via that inquiry helpline, uh, companies are free to, to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation session with our IP business advisor. So this will be Lisa, who will later speak about IP, and to discuss with her um, then in a more detail, any uh, IP related uh, issues that, that companies may experience or simply to discuss uh, IP strategies in, in, in China or wanting to understand uh, better China's uh, IP system and can then also book a meeting with IP business advisor to discuss this uh, via an online poll. Apart uh, from one on one sessions, we also organize trainings and workshops, webinars, uh, well, either online or on site trainings, workshops um, throughout China as, as, as well as in Europe. Uh, we also provide through our website 
we provide self-learning materials. You can access our guide library. We have a very extensive library of uh, IP-related guides uh, about all the basics of IP, but also industry-specific guides and, and more issue-specific guides, such as, for example, IP and technology transfer or uh, IP uh, issues, solving IP issues via contracts. And uh, for the latest news, any developments that is uh, are happening in the field of IP in China, you're welcome to keep an eye on our blog where our external experts are collaborating um, partners to uh, publish any news relating to intellectual property rights related developments uh, in, in China. All of our services that you can see here are free of charge. Of course, uh, as, as most of you, you are uh, patent attorneys, uh, the question might, uh, might arise where, where, what is the extent, what is the scope of our services? Um, we are providing, we are only providing first line advice, so we are not providing uh, legal services, uh, meaning that we cannot represent anyone in court, or we cannot also uh, register anyone's IP on their behalf. So in a case uh, when uh, a company contacts us and uh, in their case, they, they might need to, to contact an attorney uh, to, um, to address their infringement related issues or to have their IP registered, then um, they would need to, to turn to IP. So that's where, where the, the job of lawyers begins. That's where our, our job uh, stops. Uh, so Lisa, if you move a few more slides that I'll, I'll say a few more, more words um, here. Uh, China IP SME Help Desk is part of a wider family of help desks. You can see uh, that we cover now almost all continents. There is Southeast Asia, India, uh, Africa, Latin America, and also European uh, IP help desks themselves. All of the IP help desks that you see, they, they have the same services. It's just the, the geographical um, coverage that is different. And uh, here you can also see the uh, the address to our our website, which I welcome you all to to take a look at, uh, to, and then uh, to to learn more about IP or to get in contact with us. 